your way toward higher scores with the Pointmaster competition joystick from Diskwasher. Its fighter pilot's hand grip gives you control as you blow away invading mutants. The fast action thumb trigger makes blasting robots unearthly easy. And the rugged Pointmaster is almost indestructible as you maneuver through the galaxy. Extend your survival time against gorillas, ghouls, ghosts, dragons, and alien invaders with Pointmaster. Pointmaster. Hello, welcome again to another very hot and stuffy retro shed, but I'm not one to complain about the weather because oh, yeah. this, <laughs> this kind of weather is awful. It's I gorgeous. Love. I, I just love this oh, weather. Yeah. No, it's British summertime that we don't normally get. Normally in this country we get what? Grey and clouds Yay! and rain. And rain and <laughs> Shut up, kid. <laughs> so this week I was thinking about controllers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can tell I've been busy. Uh, I've been thinking about controllers and something sprang oh, to mind. God. And what sprang to mind was back in the day, I should have a pound for every time I say back in the day, I'd be very rich now. <laughs> back in the day, we used to have a variety of joysticks and controllers and all sorts of different things that we could plug into our computers to play a yeah. game. So, for example, if you were playing like an athletics game, you'd have your toughest throw around the room yeah. joystick in the world that you can just waggle until it just came apart in your hand or if you were playing like a shoot 'em up you'd have another kind of joystick you'd have different joysticks for different jobs but today when you boot your console up you just you grab the console you just, that goes with the console yeah, you, you grab yeah. the just controller grab that goes the controller with the console. that goes with the console there's no thought about it anymore is there no. you just you power up your PS4 and you reach for your PS4 so controller it's not like you power up your Xbox and reach for your PS4 That's right. controller yeah. and say oh I'll use this this time you yeah. power up your Xbox one and you've got that gorgeous elite controller, elite controller which I think is fabulous a bit yeah. expensive but fabulous and I could, this got me thinking well, what happened mm. to the humble old joystick where have we come from back then when we used joysticks to today, where we're using a combination, actually, of joystick and D-pad. So that's what we're talking about today. Yeah. We're talking about controllers and joysticks. Why is Davros on the table? I can understand the joystick thing. Is he still thing, there? But... Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're just why, not why, with it. <laughs> why, is, why is my model Davros on the, on the table? Right, you don't get it, do you? Why do you think Davros is on the table? How do you think Davros got around? He needed to he needed use a joystick. He needed a joystick, he didn't he? <laughs> well, if you look, he has a trackable. He has a trackball. So yeah. Davros spends his time playing Missile Command in his spare time. <laughs> but no, Davros likes the actual TAC-2 controller because it helps him get around. Yeah. But I'm taking the mickey. Davros yeah, is there sure. because he, of course, needs a joystick to you get You do realise he's going back up to my room and he's not staying here. Oh, <laughs> don't be like that. I swear, like... He can, stay, he can stick with his mate the Dalek over there. I mean, that Rubik's <laughs> Cube is mine. A lot of stuff in it is mine. Anyway, the joystick is actually making a bit of a comeback of late with the growing interest in retro computing and custom-made arcade cabinets. Yeah. Let's face it, that fully authentic 80s feel can only be achieved with sturdy joysticks. I agree. A modern control pad just won't do. No. <laughs> they certainly did take some abuse and rage back in the day. <laughs> Never mind probably a cigarette burn or two. Yeah. <laughs> but deep down, our relationship with the stick of joy has never gone away. So, just when did it all begin? Indeed, when did it all begin? Well, it began in the 70s. Actually, Ooh. it began in 1969 with a company no one has ever heard of before called Service Games. They're actually Sega. They launched an arcade game called Missile back in 1969, which featured a two-way left and right only joystick Gosh. that controlled the path of a missile. A four-way joystick followed shortly after from Taito in 1973 that formed part of their game called Astro Race, which allowed for left, right, up and down movement. And that was followed in 1975 by an eight-way design for a game that they called Western Gun. However, in 1977, Atari released what is probably the most iconic oh, joystick yeah. of all time. Yeah. And it's, there it is. There. And, uh, and that is, of course, the eight-way Atari 2600 joystick, oh, which yeah. I don't like. I love it. Otherwise known as a CX velocity. I don't think it's really... What's the word? You know when something... Uh, it's not responsible. It's not responsible. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think it responds very uh, well. Responsive. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Anyway, yes. this came shipped with every 2600 console. The CX-40 was actually a redesigned CX-10, which came out later before it. It did. And the design is as iconic as the Atari logo is, and it's widely yeah. recognised as one of the defining symbols of the 80s. It is. At one point, one in five US homes was said to have an Atari 2600, and 
let's be honest that's a lot of iconic sticks <laughs> <laughs> and probably the reason you can pick them up so easily on ebay yeah, as well absolutely. So i like it I know josh doesn't like it i do actually like it it's quite tough the connector on this joystick was of course the nine pin d type connector and this is the because that has become the de facto standard what, for the next 20 years um, it good, was then. used <laughs> across so many platforms with only slightly variations on, on wiring. Many systems are cross compatible with the Atari 9 pin standard from the original 2600 right up to the Sega Mega Drive and beyond but there are certain computers that don't like it and we'll come back to that in uh. a moment. Other oddities in the world of joysticks were released in the late 70s from the Intellivision numeric pad controller, which looked like a cross between a telephone and a Space 1999 prop, <laughs> to the Philips G7000 joystick, oh. which were truly awful on the fingers but. and never quite as good as the Atari ones. No, they are horrible. The early 80s was, without doubt, the golden age of the video game arcade, and almost every machine featured a tough usually made of metal as well, micro-switch joystick for controlling our hero of choice, whether that be Pac-Man, Mario, or the Vic Viper. Who's Vic Viper? Nemesis. <gasps> the home computer boom that was sweeping the nation at the same time meant that kids wanted to play these games at home. And although the keyboard was used a lot of the time, it wasn't really a substitute for a joystick, was no, it? No, the keyboard's no. got wrecked, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine playing That's an athletics bashing. game with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a huge market sprang up to cater for the demand, and the famous Kempson format was favoured by Sinclair Spectrum users, mm. as their little machine didn't include a dedicated joystick port to call their own. They didn't, because Sinclair wanted the machine as cheap as possible, so there was no mm -hmm. ports on it, really, except for the one on the back. The word Kempston is often mistaken for the name of an actual joystick. This is, is not it? true. It's incorrect. It was the name of the joystick interface, not the joystick. Oh. And everyone assumed that a Quick Shot 2 or a Competition Pro was called a Kempston joystick. They're not really. It's just the name of the interface that they plugged into. Joystick engineer here. That's right. <laughs> Again, many of the 8-bit computers of the time featured the Atari 9-pin port, which meant manufacturers could design a joystick that could be sold to a massive audience. The Kempson-style joystick could work on not just a Speccy, but a 64, Commodore 64, MSX, Amstrad, VIC-20, Atari 400, 800, and many, many more. Wow. That's quite a lot. It is. <laughs> so you can make a joystick that worked on almost every computer. <laughs> And there were always oddball machines such as the Texas Instruments, TI-99, yeah. <laughs> Dragon 32, Commodore 16 and Plus 4 that used bespoke joystick ports. But on the whole, most joysticks were cross-compatible. Yeah, and what a nightmare it was for the poor people that had the Commodore 16. <laughs> opened it up and had a look that the joystick port was a completely different design to mm. all their Aww. friends using Aww. Commodore 64. There is an adapter available, though, sad to be times. fair. It was sad times, yeah. The BBC Micro Machines came with a port labelled Analog, which was just mm. a 15-pin D-type socket, which provided more input channels but meant that the most popular joysticks would not work with the Beeb no. <laughs> without an adapter and analog to digital converter. That's right. Yeah, I used to play uh, Elite on my friend's BBC, and he used to use a standard Quick Shot Two on it. But there was an adapter. Is that on here? That's the one with the, the this two. one. Yeah, the Quick Shot Two. We used to play Elite uh, with that, well, like but that. that wouldn't work <laughs> natively with a BBC without an adapter. Uh. Many of the higher quality joysticks featured precision micro switches for direction and fire, while the cheaper models used a basic PCB with dome or leaf switches inside them. But it was nothing a can of WD-40, <laughs> some gaffer tape and a screwdriver couldn't fix up. Mm. At the beginning of the 1990s, we slowly saw the decline in the use of our much-loved home computers, and our love affair with the micro switch joystick started to come to an end. Uh. Boo. Gamers were starting to get to grips with their new consoles, which came with their own pad controllers. Mm -hmm. The gamepad wasn't exactly a new idea because we started to see the basic four-way D-pad in the Game & Watch series of the early 80s. And the NES, of course, shipped with a very basic, very ba yeah. if somewhat unergonomic, rectangular. grey rectangular pad yes. slab thing, which featured a pair of buttons, which were like fire buttons, a, B. and a basic four-way mm -hmm. directional D-pad. I hated it. I've always hated it. I like I it. Always will hate it. I really it. like it. I like it just because it's simple. It's okay for games like Mario. Yeah. Right. Where up, you just down, go left, yeah. right, A B A B. But for a, for a really good shooter, shoot 'em up game, I would never really got on with it. I for one always disliked that pad, and even today, when I need to play a good retro shoot 'em up like Nemesis or Salamander or a fighting game, yeah. I'm never happy unless I have a proper 
arcade style of joystick. Oh, very use. fussy, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I don't think you can beat the solid Namco arcade stick for the PS One. Mm. I think that's a fabulously engineered solid metal. Do you know what I mean? You can really hammer it to death. But he digresses. But do you remember you pair playing um, Street Fighter? Oh, Street Fighter, a Revival, Revival yeah. the other week. That Look how massive. solid. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. a cra- that, uh, Craig Turner built that. Turn Arcade's built that. So he puts in the highest quality sticks and joysticks that he can in that's his machine. Good. And you need that level of quality when you're playing you play a game, a game like, like Street that, Fighter. Yeah. Well, Street Fighter, in the end, you just go bang! Yeah, you just <laughs> mash those buttons. Yeah, well, I, I do. do. I've I got no smash. idea what you're doing <laughs> in that game. <laughs> I just go like, I don't think anyone does. <laughs> no. Some people got the moves down to a T. I'm just like, I just mash all no. the buttons and I hope, hope for the they best. kick or punch something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the gamepad saw various guises and designs over the years from the NES, SNES, 3DO, Mega Drive, and the like. Changes were usually in the shape and design of the actual pad and the numbers of buttons. Mm. But essentially, it was still a flat digital controller that was held in both your hands. Yes, it was. They did become more comfortable to hold, though, for did long it, yeah. periods of sweaty gaming. <laughs> <laughs> and the SNES pad introduced shoulder buttons, which are part yes. and parcel of every console. Yeah. Every console? I every do controller. Like the SNES controller. <laughs> I think the SNES controller was such a, a leap forward in design from the original NES controller. That's yeah. uncomfortable. It's just a rectangular block, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas the SNES controller is rounded. It, it, it just feels yeah. nicer to play, doesn't it? But something monumental happened to our gaming around this time, and that was called 3 D. Three-dimensional. Digital and analogue technology crashed together in a huge way in the late 90s, and that's when Sony released their DualShock analogue pad yes. for the PlayStation 1. Now, this little controller was a huge leap forwards in control, and it went hand-in-hand hand with the 3 gi 3 D. 3G. 3G. <laughs> that controller went hand in hand with a 3... 3D gaming revolution. Yes. Now, a D pad may be fine for 2D games, yep. but more yep. precise input was required when everything started to go three dimensional. Yeah, absolutely. 3D. Sony's DualShock not only featured dual analog sticks, mm. one for each thumb, but also provided a variable force vibration in the form of two motors built into the pad. Oh, there's a story. And no matter <sighs> how many times I show mom to put her fingers on the on the, the analog stick, she still doesn't know what to how to hold but it. But mom's not a gamer. She's not no, a but gamer. Isn't it pretty She's obvious? Understands. Two little circles for your two thumbs. Isn't it pretty obvious? Show her some potted plants and she's an expert. <laughs> Show her a gaming controller. She hasn't got a clip. Not the playing. first time, actually, I used um, the DualShock analog pad from yeah. Sony was, I've mentioned this in another video, the one that I bought in Thailand before it was released oh, in this yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. And the first game that I ever played where the controller shook in my hand was Gran Turismo. And what an awesome experience. day oh, and experience that yeah. was. Like, oh my God, I just hit the curb because I felt it. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Nintendo soon followed along with their new N64 console, which of course had a controller that no one had ever seen the likes of before. It had three, Nintendo. three grips, and I remember looking at this thing and thinking, what? What? How the hell do you hold that? The controller is of course the Trident, oh, and with the launch Trident. of the Dreamcast, the PS2, and the more modern Xbox era, the circle was indeed complete. What is the point in free? Because... I only use it two. Yeah, you can hold it three ways, can't you? You can yeah. hold it if with you're the left-handed, two. you use the well, it's to do with the fact you can hold the, the outermost grips and use just the D-pad, or you can hold the middle grip and the outer grip, so things like Goldeneye. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and it works beautifully on Goldeneye, to, yeah. be, to be honest with you. So I get you. At this point, we now have the best of both worlds. We have a D-pad, which is used mainly nowadays for menu or input selections, with the addition of dual analogue thumbsticks for totally accurate control of characters and vehicles and planes and helicopters in a fully 3D environment. Yes, and today we have some of the finest and most accurate controllers ever made for gaming. Yeah, right? Like my again. Elite controller, yeah. 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 And... Um, and let's not even mention wireless and VR technologies oh, that are so pushing balanced. the boundaries yeah. of what just what a controller can do all the time. I know. Yeah. I was playing um, Wipeout in yes, VR the yes, other yes, night. That's oh great. my god, that is just <laughs> made, made mom literally throw yeah. up. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, where do we go from here? Because I, for who one, knows? I appreciate a modern what? wireless controller. There's yeah. so much easier. You can sit where you want. And you, you don't just, have to you yeah, sit like a a miles away from your console. <laughs> yeah. Whereas before, it was like, I can sit five metres away yeah. from my TV. Why won't it go any further? But to be honest, I do prefer retro games any day of the week. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but whenever I boot the Amiga CD32 or an Amiga or anything like that, and I want a quick blast on Speedball 2, I know it's not a pesky That's a game pad record. I'm yeah. going to be reaching for. I'm going to be reaching for a Zipstick or a Tac 2 or something. Something that's designed 
for that type of game. Yeah. I think the joystick is far from dead. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. It really is. How many retro-inspired all-in-one controllers have we seen in the last 10 years? I mean, a there's lot. been dozens of them. Yeah. And with the release of the Spectrum Next, which we're due to get any moment now, <laughs> I'm sure many of us retro heads will be dusting off our old tac twos and our old joysticks and that's what we're going to be using because when it comes down to it nothing else will do no. right so this is going to be the last show from us for a few weeks now as yeah. we are all really busy for the next few weeks i've got to shoot a wedding next mm -hmm. week photograph sorry a wedding next week um, it's end of school for you, it's yeah. prom stuff, blah, 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 blah. So we're all really, really busy. Um, so we're going to have a mid-season break, Ooh. which is a bit like Game of Thrones. Yes, yes. This won't be for two years. No. <laughs> <laughs> Was it for two years? I think this one's going to be two years, yeah. It's been a year already. Oh, my God. And, the, of course, the, the other year. difference between us and Game of Thrones, we don't have so many people watching us. So... <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice if we did. <laughs> We're just having to see a Viking helmet on. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. You don't watch Game of Thrones. It's a good job you don't watch Game of Thrones because there's lots of things for your delicate little eyes should not be seeing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Moving on. So yeah, we'll be having a mid-season break, but yeah. when we return, we will have a very special episode indeed, which we are not going to talk about right now. Oh, but no. it'll be probably unlike anything that you've seen us do before. It's going to be quite nuts, actually. Uh, but of course, yeah. you can always catch up with what we are up to at any moment in time yeah. on social media. We're always around on Facebook, and we're always around on Twitter somewhere. Yeah. So we will be we will we'll be, be back around soon. We yeah. can't be away too long because it means Dean Hedger's back. Aren't as enjoyable. <laughs> Moving what, on. In the back. I texted him this morning actually. Hi, Dean, you're right, mate. Um, I texted him this morning to, to, to tell him about what we're doing and the fact that we're having a bit of a break. And he said something like, Bath times are not going to be, bath times are going to be lonely. Interesting. So uh, he won't have <laughs> us in his bathroom with him. Right. While he's taking a dip. Yeah, before we go, mm. um, we had our copy of Fusion magazine delivered uh, this week as Josh is now. Show, show the camera. Ooh, yeah. Show the camera. Um, which is a new publication, which is really, really good. I love the piece on Astro Wars, actually. Oh, yeah, Astro Wars. Um, and this episode is going to be in conjunction with an article in an upcoming copy of Ooh. Fusion magazine. I know. So get yourself on the subscription list for that, because it's yeah. a really, really good read. And it not only covers retro, there's an article in it about... Um, Far Cry 5, which is far <laughs> from retro. Yeah. So I think they're covering all sorts of Everything. things in there, yeah. from tabletop yeah. electronic games to the Pinball latest... shooters. Yeah, to the latest PS4 stuff. So what a great read. There you go. Anyway. Uh, so on that bombshell, thank you very much for joining us again. Yeah. Take care, and we will be speaking to you very, very soon. I'm Bye. Barry. I'm Josh. <laughs> and I'm Cheesy. Ta -ra. Bye. Time. There's a wasp in here. Oh it's my a bee. god! It's a wasp. It's a wasp. No, it's not. It's a hoverfly. It's a bee. It's a bee. It's well, a bee. Okay, it's and it's sat on the Sinclair Spectrum. Okay, well, let's finish so this then had, so I can leave. We've just had a, a bee. Oh, he's gone. He's gone out the door. Okay. There you go. Anyway.